Traders often use many trading and investing jargons without really understanding what it really means. One such classic example is momentum. If you were to ask a trader what momentum really means, chances are he or she will say momentum is the speed at which the market is moving. In a sense, this is all right, but you shouldn't be limiting your understanding of momentum just to this definition. There is more to momentum. If understood well, then momentum can form a core part of your portfolio trading strategy. Hi, this is Karthik Rangappa and welcome to another Varsity video. In this video, I'll talk about momentum. I'll share with you simple steps using which you can build your own momentum portfolio. Let's start by defining what momentum is. Momentum is the rate of change of returns over a defined time period. The time period can be anything. It can be daily, weekly, monthly, or even yearly. If you are a high frequency trader, time period can even be hourly or even 30 minutes. The higher the rate of change of returns, the higher is the momentum and vice versa. Let's dig in deeper and understand this better. Take a look at the following data. What you're seeing is the daily change in stock returns for stock A and stock B. Both the stocks have trended up. Which of the two stocks, according to you, has better momentum? Is it stock A or stock B? By the way, one key aspect that people miss out when talking about momentum is trend. Trend is the persistent movement of stock prices in a specific direction. Momentum is the speed at which this persistent movement happens. So if you think about it, if a stock or an index is exhibiting momentum in the absence of a trend, then you may not want to include such a stock in your portfolio. We'll talk more about this shortly. But for now, just remember that you always need to check for trend when thinking about momentum strategies. One easy way to check for trend is by applying a simple moving average over any stock or index that you wish to trade on. Anyway, let's go back to the example. As you can see, both stock A and stock B have trended up and both the stocks have put up a positive rate of return. Which stock do you think has better momentum? Now to figure out which stock has better momentum, we need to measure the rate of change of returns. The rate of change of returns itself can be measured in two different ways. Either you take the absolute change in rupee terms or you take a percentage change. If you go by the absolute change in rupee terms, then stock A is a clear winner here. Stock A's absolute change is 51 rupees versus 21 rupees of stock B. But there is a problem when you measure returns in absolute sense. You see, if the stock price is higher, then the absolute change will always be higher. Think about this. If you were to compare Apollo tires with MRF, then the absolute change in MRF stock price will always be higher than Apollo tires. So measuring returns in absolute change in rupee terms is not a very wise technique, especially when it comes to measuring momentum. But when you measure returns in terms of percentage change, then the stock price doesn't matter at all. And this is a much better way to define momentum. And if you were to look at the percentage change for stock A and stock B, you will realize that stock B has better momentum. Now, with this understanding of momentum and how you can measure momentum, take a look at this data. Which of the two stocks do you think is exhibiting better momentum? Is it stock A or stock B? As you can see, this is the daily change in stock price returns for seven consecutive days. Well, obviously, by looking at the daily change in returns, we can conclude stock A is better in terms of consistency of returns as opposed to stock B. The important point to observe here is when you're thinking about momentum, the consistency of returns also matter. Now, let's just add a small twist to this. On a seven day rolling window basis, which of the two stocks do you think has better momentum? Remember, we are no longer interested in daily return, but we're expanding our time frame to seven consecutive days. Well, if you were to evaluate momentum on a seven day period, then both stock A and stock B are similar and it doesn't make any difference. Which means to say, it is not just consistency of returns, momentum is also dependent on the time period that you define. As I mentioned early in this video, traders can define momentum across various time periods. It can be on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, quarterly basis, or even yearly basis. And if you are a high frequency trader, you can even define momentum on a 30 minute basis or a one hour basis. And at this stage, I hope you've understood four important points. How to define momentum, how to measure momentum, how time period makes a difference when you're looking at momentum. And finally, the importance of trend when you're looking at momentum. And with this in background, 
I will now proceed to explain how you can build your own momentum portfolio. I must tell you this, if you are a programmer, then building this portfolio will be very easy for you. If you are not a programmer, then it's a bit of a manual work, but maybe you can take the help of one of those AI models to help you build one. The process of setting up this momentum portfolio involves six simple steps. Let's go through it in sequence. Step one. To begin with, you need to define the universe of stocks. There are nearly 5,000 stocks in BSE and 2,000 in NSE. It is pointless to track all these stocks. You will have to pick and choose a certain set of stocks that you will track. Eventually, the momentum portfolio that you create will come from this tracking universe. Let me put this in perspective. In Bangalore, as you can imagine, there are hundreds of shopping malls. Whenever I have an urge to shop, I need not have to hop around all these hundreds of malls. I can pick two or three malls which I will frequently visit. I'll pick them based on my convenience, maybe proximity to my house. And once I select these two or three malls, I only need to track what's available in these malls. The eventual wardrobe that I curate for myself is based on what's available in these two or three malls. Here, the hundreds of malls in Bangalore is equivalent to the number of stocks listed on the entire exchange. The two or three malls that I frequent is the tracking universe. It's a subset of the entire list of malls in Bangalore. Finally, the wardrobe that I curate for myself is again a subset of my tracking universe and this forms my portfolio. And this is equivalent to the portfolio that I eventually create. As a trader or an investor, you are much better off by clearly defining your tracking universe. The tracking universe can be based on any criteria. For example, you may be interested in tracking only the Nifty 50 stocks, BSE 500 stocks, or maybe the mid cap 250 stocks. Or it can be based on market capitalization. For example, you may be interested in tracking only those companies which have a market cap of 1000 crores or more. Or it can be based on a particular sector. For example, you may want to track only the pharma stocks, only the IT stocks, only the cement stocks. The point that I'm trying to make here is that the tracking universe should be based on a certain criteria that you understand well. If you are unsure where to start, then I would suggest you look at BSE 500 as a starting point. The reason for this is simple. Most of the good quality stocks are in this list anyway. So that takes care of your step one. In step two, you need to download the daily closing prices of all the stocks in your tracking universe for at least one year. You need to ensure that your data is clean. And by clean, I mean that it should be cleaned for corporate actions like stock splits, bonuses, and special dividends. And if you're not sure what this really means, then I would highly encourage you to watch this video that I made on the same topic. In step three, you need to calculate the daily returns of the stock. Calculating the daily returns is a fairly straightforward affair. Here is the formula to do that. Step four is important. Here, you will rank all the stocks in your tracking universe. For example, if you have 100 stocks in your tracking universe, rank one will be for the stock which has generated the highest return on a yearly basis. Rank 100 will be for the stock which has generated the least return on a yearly basis. So if you realize, what you've essentially done here is rank all the stocks based on the momentum the stock has displayed on a yearly basis. We now proceed to step five, where we actually build our momentum portfolio. For instance, if you want to build a portfolio of 10 or 15 or 30 stocks, then you'll simply go ahead and buy all the stocks ranking from one to 30 or one to 15. Whether you want 15 stocks or 30 stocks in your portfolio really depends on your risk tolerance. Generally speaking, higher the number of stocks in your portfolio, lower is your portfolio's volatility. The logic of building a momentum portfolio in this way is based on an assumption that if a stock has displayed momentum for the last 12 months, then the persistency of returns will kick in and the momentum will continue at least for another month. And by buying into these stocks, you're essentially riding the momentum of the stock. As far as the portfolio construction itself goes, you can choose to do an equally weighted portfolio wherein you divide the capital by the total number of stocks that you wish to have and invest in equal parts. Or you can even skew your portfolio wherein let's say you invest 50% of your capital in the top 5 stocks and probably the other 50% in the remaining 15 stocks assuming you want a 20 stock portfolio. Step 6. This is where you rebalance your momentum portfolio. Assume that you bought into a momentum portfolio on the first of the month. Now, exactly after a month, on the first of the next month, 
you will rebalance your momentum portfolio. Before rebalancing, you re-rank all the stocks in your tracking universe and check for momentum once again. Note, when you do this, you will include the latest month's closing price data and flush out the oldest month's data. Remember, we are calculating the returns on a one-year rolling window basis. The central idea here is to rebalance and reconstruct the momentum portfolio on a monthly basis or any time period you are interested in. When you do this, you automatically take care of the stop loss and the target for individual stocks. Please note, this is not the only way to build the momentum portfolio. This is one of the ways. You can use this as a thought startup. Before I wrap this video, a few things that you need to be aware of. Momentum portfolio works only when the market is trending. So make sure you check for trend. A simple 200-day moving average over broader market indices will help you understand if the market is trending or not. In fact, you can even apply moving average over all the stocks in your tracking universe and pick only those stocks which are trending. On these trending stocks, you can calculate the returns and rank. So this is one way of filtering stocks. Momentum strategy does not perform well when markets are choppy. So avoid using this in choppy markets. Everything I've discussed so far can be changed. You can build a momentum portfolio and rebalance it on a quarterly basis, weekly basis, or even on a daily basis. But remember, higher the frequency of rebalancing, higher are your costs, including brokerage costs. You can even do a trend check on sectors. See which are the sectors which are trending by doing a simple moving average check and on those sectors, you can build sector-specific momentum portfolios. Your momentum criterion need not be just prices. It can be fundamental factors like the profit margin, EBITDA margin, growth in quarterly numbers, etc. Although I'm not a big fan of this. And finally, always backtest your strategy. Check if the momentum thesis has worked well in the past and only then implement this in real markets. Good luck and do let me know what you think about the momentum strategy by commenting below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.